never see nor knew existed. As the pistol round gets ready to kick off, need more DM going to be starting on the defense. A little bit difficult for the likes of Forza here is not ideal to be starting on that attack. We do have BZT on the raise, but you're not going to see the raise come in from Forza. You're going to see the Phoenix breach play. So again, talked about it a little bit stale. We'll see if it works out a little bit better, though, for Forza here. Looks like there's a little bit of mid control here from Forza trying to get a look inside Postal or the mail room, but it's a wall that separates them and the opposition. And they'll start hacking away at it, trying to make their way through, which gives the, the defense some time to escape. BZT at the edge of his seat, at the edge of the rafters there, as Ikine will have a great angle. Shots, though, not going to connect. They will connect, but will not finish the kill. And now having to back away down the ropes. It's a smoke there as well. They'll actually push in through the ramp, which was planned all along the entire time, but they'll survive. It's the defense that's set up with the molly, and they'll be smoked alive. Barcode finishing those last and final frags. And it's all up to the last and final player, Impala for Forza. And like you said earlier on, it's important for them to win the attacker pistol. And it's not looking like that'll be the case this time around. Tegan is going to be looking at the damage he dealt that round. He's gonna be like, you got to be freaking kidding me. Uh, the breach <laughs> was on like 5 HP, did significant damage to the targets as they came up ramp as well. Even that last kill. Almost his, just couldn't quite get it. So two assists in the pistol round for Tikane, who's going to go towards the SMG here, upgrading to the Spectre. We'll still see a little bit of pistol power brought into the round. Smart 7 on the Frenzy and the Ghost for coffee. What's interesting is Smart 7 buying down to 1300. That's going to significantly impact what he's able to do in the next round. So a bit of a gamble here coming in from the Sage. There's the early slow orb coming out. The wall is already prepped here for what could be a mid push. And you can see there's quite a bit of bodies building up in mid in general. Tegan, just needs to time this one, right? As soon as he spots the targets. Oh, not even going to get a chance. What is that wall? A little bit interesting. Not exactly the ideal wall given the situation, but he's going to play around it anyway. Tegan is wow. going to peek out and find two with the SMG. BZT is even there with the frenzy of all things. They don't anticipate this target behind them. That allows Zeddy to get at least two kills. One with the jumping classic before finally being taken out. So the round ends up being a little bit more punishing than maybe it should have been, but it is need more DM who come away with the victory. You know, we talked we talked about some of that agent selection for the side of Forza. It does seem like they're like you touched on earlier on, uh, sticking to the same book that they've had for most of the maps that they play. But an interesting adaptation for Foda. You know, usually we spam that soda for the Sova play. But he's rocking that breach this time around, and quite frankly, there's no Sova uh, at all for either team. And so I wonder, uh, relying strictly on Cypher to get you the information that you need, I wonder how that might end up. We already see BZT losing the op out of play. Unfortunately, it's out of reach by the attack. Barcode on the opposite side does not have an angle in towards the garage, so they might be able to... Actually, they can't retrieve it without being spotted. And so now you're seeing the, the rotation come in from Tegan and trying to provide some support. But it's just two in the garage. They'll find one. And there's still one more. It's the headshot for Barcode. The rest of the team, of course, they are piled in towards A. But that spike, why did they leave it all the way back in ramen? They're probably scratching their head now as they have to frag out potentially to win the round. They are sending feelers back towards the spike. The brim is running towards it. They don't realize that they don't have spike control. So Cypher, the or Impala as the Cypher who's currently in ropes, has a chance to take out the Sage who's currently in mailroom, but goes back towards heaven. Right now, the big issue is these players are so far apart from one another, and they're still a member of the defense on the B site. Cypher is locking this position down. Right around the corner, he's got a target, and he's holding this line of sight. There's the cyber cage. And going to get a better position. The shots come through from the Cypher. That might peel Sage away, but... Pretty soon, the Sage is going to hear this push coming, and now you see Impala moving back. Tigane just has to get the timing right onto the Cypher coming oh. through from ropes, but Impala able to get the best of him. Running onto the site is Coleon to get that spike secured. So it will fall down into a two-on-two, -two, but the Cypher has eight HP. Very low on health right now is Impala. 
Yeah, he uses that camera to spot that there are two confirmed in heaven. A couple of early pre-fire shots from Kolyan. And they'll smell that someone's in the back of sight. They'll quickly take care of Impala. And now it's the buddy system to swing together, holding hands, making sure that they survive. And it's barcode with three kills on the round. And, you know, we talked about side selection. Of course, it was Foda that was the last man standing in the knife round. So it makes a whole lot of sense for Need More DM to start on defense, really get a huge leg up. Considering the statistics and basing it off of the success here, um, Need More DM are going to have a pretty good round. Uh, sorry, a pretty good half. I wonder if it'll be as good as the 10-2 on Bind. Um, that's what we're going to have to wait and see. But considering how convincing Bind was, I wonder if the same convincingness will happen on Split. Here's the thing, too. Koleon had a molly. So in that 1v2, Koleon could have delayed that a lot longer instead of taking that aggressive peek and then hit that molly on the spike. You've heard a lot of players complaining about it. There is absolutely no way to counter it. You can't do anything about it. You just have to wait for the molly to fade. So he could have bought a lot of clock. And even if he had died, there's a possibility he could have bought enough clock to win the round. So a little bit disappointing there that in the 1v1, we don't see the molly come out from Koleon to try and help clutch things out. Now the wall is going to be sent over towards a ramp. Crazy Deer putting a smoke down on the other side of that one as the opposing Brim dropped the smoke inside Heaven as well. Molly's going to go down. BZT over in Heaven right now with the AWP going to spot one right around the corner in just a moment as there are two targets currently funneling up mid. There's the flash coming in, but it's not going to be where it needs to be. Somehow that still flashes him. That was a little bit odd. The nade goes down. Nice shot from BZT. The follow-up isn't there, but look at the positioning from the Cypher. Getting up underneath the ropes over on the B site, but the breach is alone, isolated, looking for someone, something to help him out. And what he's going to get is a gap in the defense. Zeddy, for a moment, had an opportunity to go back towards the A site, but the Breach realized, okay, hold on, he has stairs control, could go back towards A, so Foda's just going to hold this line. And you know, earlier on in that round, something that we missed was a heavy push towards A, uh, and the defense were able to just really dismantle it. Looking at those X's on the mark, they're all in and around the ramp. Looks like an unsuccessful push towards up in heaven to gain control of the A site. One thing I've noticed with Forza is that they are quite split up in their attacks and really there's no pun intended on the map name. Um, it's just the fact that I wonder if they stacked up together similar to how they found, you know, very little success stacking together as a defensive unit on bind. Can they find that similar success? We're already seeing, uh, you know, the team split up and, and go different directions. But uh, hasn't really worked out quite well for them so far. That was, of course, another gun round for them. Looks like a pistol up and coming. So the sheriffs, the frenzies, and the ghosts tell me that. But I think they need to stick a little bit more together. I mean, you forego control for the opposition to potentially push in if they're feeling confident. Um, but at the end of the day, they might just respect you enough to give you that opportunity to five stack. BZT waiting for the peak to come through. Nice flick up. The headshot onto Coffee. Not necessary, but it doesn't matter as the shot delivers. BZT's got a couple of targets right around the corner. Get some support from Tegan wow. A, who comes through in the clutch, using that wall to sneak into the mail room to deliver a package of death to the side of Forza. Forza now is just on two. Smart seven who's just got that lowly SMG, the Stinger, and his teammate was taken out over on the A site. At least Smart 7's going to find one kill on the round. I guess that's the silver lining, but the aggressive play from Barcode over on B main, given that there's nothing coming his direction, allows him to get the backstab. Five straight rounds here for Need More DM. Feels like a repeat of the last map. Okay, but let me pose a question to you, okay? We've got five rounds now. I think Forza are, are on a gun round here. If you are Forza... What do you do, or what small victories can you create with what you have? What do you think would be the success here for Forza on some of these attacking rounds? Let's put Split being a little defender-sided, put that aside, and let's talk about, let's focus in on how Forza can actually, like, what is their win condition? Strong individual play. <laughs> but the way that they're playing, that's that's basically it currently. 
Uh, we're going to need to see someone pick up the operator and, and do some damage. They need entries, and they finally get one. Coffee is going to find the first. There's a quick almost double coming in from Foda. Phoenix very close to death. Goes ahead and pops the ult. That will result in a cell heal once the ult is completed, so it makes sense. Curveball around the corner, looking to clear out Heaven. Not going to spot any ju anybody just yet. Does initially make contact, but as I say that, the ult ends. Run it back over. So it's retake territory now. Again, they needed the entries, and they ma actually managed to find them. It came down to just needing to perform on an individual level and also not needing to get onto an A site and leaving the spike across the map like we saw just a few rounds ago. It's going to fall down to one. It's BZT who's got the operator in heaven. It's a one on four. Good luck. As three ults are available, you've got the resurrection, the neural theft, and the orbital strike. At this point, BZT should be looking for an avenue to save. I like that setup and screens. They just had two in the back corner. Uh, you know, for anyone to peek, just spray him down. And even if there was one frag, it would be the trade that would be easy for them to find. A good round for Forza. And like you said, it's just the entry that they found and an unfortunate positioning for Foda there, I think. Um, you know, you limit to where you can go if you're hiding behind that box. Yes, it's a cheeky spot for the attack to really maybe not check so qu quickly. Because once they push in, they check close left, and then they immediately check right. So they don't have the time to check the behind the box. And so it is a cheeky spot, but for Foda, um, he only ended up with one there. And so now, Forza, back to the drawing board. How can they get another? At the end of the day, that's the name of the game. They don't want a repeat of a 10-2 half. They want something better than that, a 9-3 or an 8-4 or, you know, whatever it ends up being. And so for them... Uh, Success with one, they need another now. It started with those entries coming out from the Phoenix. The Phoenix play has been something that was heavily criticized on the desk for just being... I don't, I don't want to say lackluster. I feel like that's a word I've used already too much given the way that we saw that last map go, but just isn't what they need it to be. And as I say that, coffee falls. So the Phoenix, the person who should be responsible for a lot of those openers, goes down. Quick res coming out from Smart 7. The Orbital Strike was utilized, but the Orbital Strike still in possession here of the attack. We'll see how they decide to use that one. They've got the Rolling Thunder as well, so they can combo those ults to really gain access to a site. And if they were to throw it towards B right now, there's quite a few bodies in that territory. You've got Sage back steps, Breach, Looks to be potentially on balcony or at least right below it. And there's the Rolling Thunder, the ult we were just talking about. So Foda's going to be moving out of position, tries to counter flash, come through. There's the nice peek coming out from Tigane. Only one kill despite the fact that the flash had them all blind. There's the orbital strike as well, but it's not going to be in a position that's going to produce anything. But it will at least clear out that area. There's the Neural Theft being popped now. Crazy Deer comes around the corner, drops one in the corner. Barcode from inside the site, still alive, still doing damage. It's a back and forth volley and it's down to Crazy Deer. They know where he's at. It's a one on too, but look at the damage dealt to the breach. Very close to death as he takes the wide swing. Crazy Deer is going to find three. It's Need More DM who claw their way out of a dangerous situation and find a sixth round. Wow. I like the attempt from Forza, but at the end of the day, what was it? A five stack push in through the mail room? Like, you need to send somebody towards Garage, or at least two, to try to get a little bit of a counter angle. Yes, Orbital Strike was able to be used to clear some of that backside issues, some of those backside issues that they had pushing in, but uh, you need a little bit more than that. If you've got some some boots on the ground floor, they can negate some, uh, negate some of those angles that Crazy Deer was able to find. Um, an early look from BZT. I, I don't actually know if that was a Blast Pack boost. I'm it, was. Assume it was. But, it was, but... Um, those it, it's finally come to fruition for him i feel like we saw it many many a time yesterday uh, and i think it only worked once on angel but uh here's another one and it's looking real good when the defense is entry killing you when you're on attack that's a problem uh bzt goes for that satchel play and it works out nicely crazy deer around the corner only able to get one the nade comes through and kind of cuts the push in half that allows bzt to isolate impala and again, it's the numbers advantage for needing more DM. You know, this map, yeah, sure, super defense-sided. So I don't want to discount what Force is doing too much, but at the same point in time, it just feels like not, it's not working. This Phoenix play, they talked about it in the pre-show, it just doesn't seem to make sense. Um, I would much rather see the Rays, maybe even an Omen in here. Omen's become a lot more popular on Split, especially with the Paranoia update not that long ago. 
But Forza need to find a solution in the long run and the short term. They need to figure out a solution so they don't lose this map, but they also need to figure out a solution for the long term because this setup just isn't working. Uh, we saw it on the last map, and we're seeing it here. It just doesn't seem to connect for Forza. You were touching on some of that agent play. You know, Coffee did look a lot better on the raise when it came to Ascent, but I, wa I wonder yeah. if it is... I, uh, like the, the question becomes for Coffee and even Zeddy, because he was playing the Omen as well. The, the question becomes, is it the map that gave you the confidence to play that agent well? Or is it or is it the map that gave you the confidence to play? And, and there's a big distinction there, you know? Uh, Tom really hit it, hit the nail on the head. We're saying, Artist is not a great Sova. Artist is just a great player. And so I wonder if it's the map or the, the agent that really made Ascent doable here for Forza. And if it's the agent, then why haven't we seen it return, right? It's obvious, it's obvious that you know how to play it. It's obvious that you know how to put your best foot forward and, and find those those picks or use the paranoia well. Like, Zeddy was falling back on Ascent, using the paranoia well, finding refrags, putting himself in a position that Omens really like to be in. So, I think we can both agree that we're a little disappointed that we didn't see at least some adaptation. There's that opening pick yet again from BCT as the raise. Usually, raise is using the nades. Oh, nice shot. Spots the shoulder of Kolyan. And that's two quick kills coming out here for the defense. Another impressive start. The clock's at a minute and 10 when both of those kills come through. So that's a little bit brutal right now for Forza, and they don't have the res. Cypher is even low on HP over towards A, and they're going to continue to hold this line back behind the wall in mid. If they challenge BCT again, this could backfire a bit. There's the flash to at least force him back, and it looks like they're going to try and go for an A split, but you've still got Brim holding Heaven right now, and he'll be aware of the fact that they've lost mid. You can see the comms already kind of telling him, hey, they could have ropes control. Yep, they're going to peek, but... Coffee unfortunately gets taken out, and so does Smart Seven. Crazy Deer able to defend Heaven. The last member standing, it's Impala, and that car is going directly back to the shop. Crazy Deer with three, and we are inching ever so close to a potential 10 2 half. And quite honestly, if fours that don't shape up right now, I could even see an 11 1, and that is scary with the pistol in the second. That's one of those times I wish we didn't have. X-ray, so you could see and appreciate just how quick that flick was onto that Sage. I mean, that was dirty play coming in from Crazy Deer in heaven. Eight rounds to one. Forza looks like they're going to be at least grouping up towards the same territory, trying to dedicate themselves towards a push. They don't have a single ult to work with. Coffee's close. He's nearly got the run it back. But all five bodies stacked up outside of long. You've got to contend with the brim ult here. So Crazy Deer can pop that ult. Maybe times it right. He might be able to cut this push in half. Yep, he throws down the molly and it's Foda to follow up with the flash. But they'll get the frag. But it's Foda in the back of the site. The elbow really proving to be the battle station for him. Smart 7 swings with the stinger. And now you'll see the rest of the defense start to funnel in through from behind. BZT's got himself the up using the blast pack to make things very difficult for Smart 7. It's the jumping classic, baby. That gets it done. Now it's just down to the 1v3. Zeddy up above in heaven. 19 HP in a dream. But so far, it's the defense that have been making it a nightmare as BZT finishes with the op shot. And it's a 9-1 score line. That jumping shot just kind of emphasizes what this half has looked like for Forza. Because even when they find a bit of an opening, it all just falls apart. So they manage to get on the site. They take out the brim as the orbital strike comes through. And then Foda's there to find a couple of kills from backside of elbow. In that time, as he dies, the res comes through on the brim up in heaven. BCT's made it back towards spawn. He's tossing blast packs over top of that wall, just pelting the sage with additional damage coming in from those explosives. And then jump shots him with a classic from like 40 feet away. Ridiculous. We'll see what it is that Forza does to try to adjust here, but... Again, it looks like we're going to see a couple of bodies in mid, a few moving towards A. It looks like we might see that A split attempt yet again with them getting control of ramp. But the spike falls off mid, and it's actually working back towards B main. So curious to see what the plan is here from Forza. Crazy Deer, we've seen him defend Heaven before. 
Will he do the same here? Tigane using that wall towards the ramp here. We've seen it pretty much every single round in mid, and so that repositioning might throw Forza off. Still, three going to be committed to this push, but that spike, it's quite a distance away. It's looking like Forza and company, Smart7, going to be leading that charge towards the garage, but there's the infamous Cypher anchor on that B site. Leave that Cypher alone, and it'll pay you well. But now that running back tells us it's going to be the entry, but it runs out quickly. Did he? I think it was the spray from... Crazy deer to take it out, and now it's just Forza caught with their hands empty with no entry to the site. So the plan was a fake towards A, and they were going to sneak their way onto the B site. The problem is that ult <laughs> is going to cut things a little bit short, and this peak spots out the spike. They'll let it know, be known that, hey, they're trying to plant on B. And that's the round over. At this point, if you're a remaining member of the team, you got to save. Smart 7... And his teammate could not get onto the site in time, and there's kills piling up all over the map. I, I at least applaud Forza for trying something different and going for a peculiar round strategy. They tried to bait out a rotate from Need More DM, but in order to bait out a rotate, you have to actually kill somebody. Uh, you have to find an opening, and they didn't get that opening over towards the A site. They didn't find anything really over on the A site. What's impressive right now is Foda is sitting at 4-4, four and four, who's had a... Great game thus far across all three maps, but it's Crazy Deer and BZT who are destroying 29 combined kills. 15, 4, and 2, 14, 4, and 1. Crazy Deer's been locking down heaven. BZT's been there with the operator across the map. And speaking of the operator, there's Foda to get things started. <laughs> yeah, sure, maybe on the bottom of the scoreboard, but the impact of each of those kills felt pretty much by Forza. Very heavy blow early on losing that cypher. I think Forza fans might be upset with me because I predicted an 11-1 scoreline. And at this point, might be looking that way. So far, trade, though, in mid puts it back to the 4v4. This is, of course, not a Cypher cam. This is just a look in to see the above location of how Barcode is stuck in a very interesting position. But an interesting position might net him a couple of frags. He's playing so patiently. This might be the round winner. The spray is good. On to all three. Barcode takes them all down. And it's a quick round for Need More DM. The half is so good for Need More DM that you couldn't even caster's curse that last round. Uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned like, oh, I predicted 11-1. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, this is normally where things would end 10-2. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Forza... Just, they just can't seem to catch a break. Look at this patience from Barcode. Just waiting back behind this wall. This is not a look we've seen from them yet playing back behind this box. No reason to anticipate the play as typically speaking, they've got BZT in heaven with the op who's being a problem. But BZT was so incredibly mobile with that operator. We saw him go for a blast pack peaks on A. We saw him peek from heaven. We saw him peek from mid ropes. He was all over the place and they could not find a solution. And that's why he had such an insane half. And then when they tried to go for static plays, Crazy Deer was there with the punish as well. So we move into the second half, 11 to 1. Need more DM can win things if they just pick up the pistol. Because at that point, the money would be atrocious coming into what could be the final round there for Forza and the nail in the coffin to sink their fate. Ooh, look at this. But it's bar again, barcode again. But he's, gets, he's spotted out. They're not letting that happen twice. An early pick here for the defense as they get aggressive and try to be the deciders. A wall already to, to, to you know, stop the push in coming in from the stairs. The rest of the team, they'll make their way onto the site. And it's the defense that are now stuck in a 4v2 coffee, having to escape down to zero. And it's a quick round straight to the throat by Need More DM. And they're match point for the series. My man is feeling himself right now. Crazy Deer just cannot be stopped. 19 and 4. That is absurd. At this point, it doesn't matter that there's a scoreboard bug. He's the only player on the scoreboard I really care to see. The only <laughs> other one I wish we could see is BZT, who's just behind him. But at this point, it doesn't really matter, as this is likely to be the final round. 12-1, and they decide, hey, no tomfoolery. Let's just group up. We'll take the A site. There's two players here coming in from the defense, and they've gone for a wall boost. So they're trying to get cute at least, getting vertical. They use the frenzy of all pistols to win that first fight. But now you've got support showing up from the Phoenix, and uh-oh, it's starting to look a little bit scary here as Coleon has also arrived and made it a two-on-two. -two. Again, given the scoreline, I don't think there's really a whole lot to be concerned about right now if you need more DM, but you definitely wanted to close things out. 
Yeah. Oh, blast back to BCT is going to get over to safety. And quite thankfully, he was able to get there that quickly. Impala is going to find one. It's down to the 1v2. It would be a crucial one to win. But it's Impala by the skin of his teeth making it a 12-2 scoreline. He's upset. Swipes the air there. Says no to BZT. And Forza's dreams, they stay alive. That was a round that they obviously had to force up. And so considering how much money was spent on the side of Need More DM, they may not have the credits to really have a competitive round. So things are going to start to get really crazy for the economy. That was beautiful. That cam smooth was awesome. Flying down in towards the site, down that skyscraper. I, I mean, sure, Forza found a round. Okay. We'll see if they can do that again. Uh, you're going to see the force up from Need More DM because they understand that that came down to one person and the money isn't going to be fantastic because it was also a force up on the other side. Smart7 here with the Bulldog spraying from heaven. Zeddy gets the opener barcode with a quick response. Smart7 trying to slow down the push by putting that slow orb on site, but they're going to have full site control and they're going to go ahead and secure the plant. It's going to be a four on four post plant with like a minute and 20 seconds left, which is kind of <laughs> crazy that they got onto the site that fast. Illustrates how easily they've been able to get past this defense at times. There's the Bulldog from oh, BZT. No. It's a quick punish as both players get caught off guard and now it's fallen on to Kolyon and Impala Impala with the judge will find one Kolyon able to get one as well but it's down to now a two on one Impala has at least upgraded from the judge to a phantom dinked immediately on the peak but it doesn't stop him from moving up further but the damage is just too great 13 to 2 need more DM crush Forza in the last two maps yeah 